Hey everybody. Um, today I wanted to show you guys how I enjoy weaving a chainmail weave called Helm Chain. Um, I don't know what's called that, just because it is, I guess. Um, but it seems to be one of the more commonly accepted names of this weave. Now, part of what keeps chainmail so interesting um, is it, sometimes there's anywhere from three to like seven different names for the chainmail for the different weaves and stuff. So it can get kind of um, confusing to someone over there starting out. I know it was for me um, to be like, oh, wait, Kingsmail? Does that is that Byzantine Kingsmail or the eight and one Kingsmail? <laughs> like, which one are you talking about? So it's um, it's it's. I try to keep myself familiarized with uh, who's calling what what. So. <laughs> <clears throat> now, uh, just because I like rainbows, so I'm doing a rainbow pattern here. I'm going to be changing the camera angle here shortly. Um, but I'm using six, 16 gauge, 5 16 rings. Boop, you can see there. Um, and all of them that I'm using <clears throat> are going to be closed. So, uh, and here I'm using anodized aluminum that I've gotten from the Ringlord as well as C and T Designs. It's like C ampersand T Designs. If you Google it, you'll find their website. They have a really nice like variety of different color schemes and stuff. So that's good fun. But yeah, you'll just go through and close a bunch of those because you'll need different amounts for whether you're making, you know, a seven inch bracelet or an eight inch bracelet or a necklace or I've seen some really cool uh, belly dance belts made with quite large, um, quite large rings, like almost like a key ring size, like one inch rings. Um, and then the second ring size that I'm going to be using here are the 18 gauge 316. It's much smaller and you'll, I'll be moving the camera to where it's like right here and those you'll want open. Um, again, I'm not really going to give you, going to give you a set number right now. Um, because I'm only going to be demonstrating like maybe like two or three inches of it, but it'll give you an idea. And also if you use different ring sizes, because this can be accomplished with a lot of different ring sizes, um, it, it'll use a different ring quantity. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get a bunch of rings prepped and then I'm going to move the camera around for y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, also, you just need some pliers. That's what's beautiful about chain mail. As long as I've got these and some rings, I can make basically whatever I want. <laughs> so no fancy tools required. So I have all of my rings set up here. I'm using rainbow and like a kind of darker hematite silver. Um, for a contrast so that you know I'll be able to say oh thread through the red ring you know and uh, those are in the 16 gauge 5 16 and then those will be our large rings for the sake of this tutorial and then our small rings are the 18 gauge 3 16 and all of these are open just like that now whenever you close a ring <clears throat> You want to, oh come on camera, you want to bring the ends of it together like that, or a little better if you can. But the goal here is to, um, is to make the ring look as much like a flush completed circle as you can. And to open them, I always open them kind of this way because it allows you to thread rings on um, without distorting the circle. So let us begin. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to thread on a red and an orange. Whenever you're not doing a rainbow sequence, just put on two large rings. But for the sake of the rainbow sequence, I kind of have to do it this way. Um, and then I'm going to hold my rings like this to where this top part's just protruding up. And then I'm going to set one of my closed silver just on top like that so that whenever I hold it like this it's suspended and kind of interwoven that way and then I'm going to put on another orange and another red 
Now, I want it to where the oranges, whenever it's laying flat, the oranges will be on the same side. So th this will make sense here in a minute. And then I'm going to close this ring. So this is what I have going on so far. And now I'm going to thread another open small ring through all of this. Sometimes it can really help to have it opened up <clears throat> pretty uh, generously. So I'm going to thread through these two. And then kind of sneak through here, the center of the silver one. Sorry for all the blurry guys. <clears throat> but uh, this is the best setup I have for taking video now that it's winter and the lights inside the house are brighter than the lights outside. <laughs> so I'm just going to close this ring. So we have it looking like that. And so now from here, you'll take this and bring the two orange rings together and bring the two red rings together. And this is the beginning of our weave. Now, um, later I'll be attaching a bail. So to mark that it's the beginning of our weave, I'm just going to hook one of my open small through the two red and then close it. Just like that. <clears throat> and so now from here, <clears throat> you can see how these two kind of fall open. I'm going to sandwich a silver, like so, between the orange. And I'm going to thread this ring through, like that. Thread one of the small silver. And then I'm going to put a gold entering from this side and then I'm going to kind of peek that end through the silver and layer another gold just right there on top and I'm going to close that ring now also you'll notice don't be afraid to insert your pliers from a weird angle. So long as you get the grip on your rings the way that you're looking for, it'll work. And you can see the difference too here between threading two rings through and just threading one ring through. Technically the one ring is solid, but I like the look of the two. It makes it look more substantial. So I'm going to thread another silver ring through and again this really helps at this point to uh, have it very very wide open at least for me if you're having difficulty try different things see what works best for you so I've thread through the two orange or the two gold and now I'm threading through the two orange And we're going to close that ring. Now also, there's a very alternate way that we could be performing this weave. <clears throat> and that would be to put the silver ring through. Put the small ring just through the gold and it's important here that you're not hooking around this the silver large ring and then closing it now really with this ring size there's almost no way I would have been able to hook around that ring but sometimes what seems impossible will just happen <laughs> so it's good to know to avoid it and then I'm going to add in the second small silver ring and close that <clears throat> and now from here, I would actually open 
the next large ring that I'm going to be adding and just thread it through like this and then close it and then flip over to the other side and honestly this is probably way easier <laughs> it's um at least especially for whenever it's a pretty dense weave like this <clears throat> So you can see there, it still makes the same thing, the same weave, just uh, maybe a little easier. <laughs> and so I'm going to do a couple more like that, where I'm just going to sandwich in the silver ring between the two colors. Still got that pretty nice and wide. thread your small silver through the two colors, in this case the two yellow. Make sure it's not hooking the large silver but just threading through the center of it. And then close that ring and add one more. Also, this is a fantastic way to incorporate stretchy rings. Now you'll notice though if you were doing this with stretchy rubber you would want the stretchy rings to be these large colors that are on either side because this one here, the silvers, they're just sandwiched in there. They aren't actually load bearing at all. And whenever you're making a stretchy bracelet, you want it to be able to stretch. And so you could either have the stretchy ones be these little ones or you could have the stretchy be the outer, like the bread of the sandwich. If the uh, silver ones are the meat and the... I'm just hungry. Um, and the colored ones are the bread. It would be a, you'd want the bread to be stretchy. <laughs> and so I've just threaded that through the two yellow. So yeah, sorry to start you all off with the more complicated way, but um, whenever I'm doing a little bit more of a wide open aspect ratio, um, like maybe if these were 18 gauge instead of 16 gauge on the larger rings, the first way would have been much easier. Um, and I feel like a little faster. So um, that's why I kind of show it that way. Because it's normally how I weave it. And so now I've got it open and I just hook through the two small on one side of the silver. And, oops, now see, I hate it when that happens, because it chipped up my aluminum. Scrap pile. <laughs> now, a way that you can kind of avoid that happening um, is uh, there's a product called Tool Magic that you can coat your pliers in, and that will make it a little gummier, helps it grip better sometimes. So I just threaded through one side. And then I flip it over and thread through those same two rings, but on the other side of the silver. And get a nice clean closure. And I wanted to do at least one color repetition for y'all. So I've just sandwiched the uh, silver between the green and I'm threading through just like that and to close it. Now also I think I'm going to show another modification to the weave if you're having difficulty threading through the middle like this. I will show you as soon as I add a couple of light blue rings. But yeah, just through the two on one side of the silver and close it. Yeah, I wish I had some hot pink to uh, add into the mix because I really like the way rainbow sequences look with um, some hot pink mixed in. 
but I'm all out. <laughs> so, okay, so now from here, let me pull out a couple, oops, a couple more of these uh, 16 gauge or 18 gauge rings. And so the modification is um, instead of sandwiching the silver through between these two blue rings the way we would have been doing, is I'm just going to go ahead and add the uh, small silver, and I'm going to close it. And again, this may or may not be easier for you. Um, if you absolutely hate it, try a different way. <laughs> but I thought I'd demonstrate it just for, you know, for the one of y'all that's out there that this is like, is what helps you get it. And so I'm going to open my silver large. And I'm going to come between the two blue large while being very careful to not thread through those two silver. And then I'm going to close that. And now I would continue with my sequence by adding in just the way that we were. So again, if you aren't really comfortable with your pliers in tight spaces, or if you're working with like, especially like stainless steel, or something that can be a pain to work with. Um, aluminum is all nice and like soft, so um, you know it's not difficult at all really to get in there into tight spaces and close a ring. But if it's stainless steel and you got to get your elbows behind it um, to really like wrench it around and get a good closure, then this might be the way to go. Uh, adding it in truly, truly one ring at a time. And so I'm going to demonstrate that sequence one more time, and that will bring us to a full color rotation so I've just got my two little silver just hooking through the two dark blue and hooking through the two dark blue closing them now I've got one of my large dark silver and I'm going to open it. And I'm going to thread between the two dark blue without threading through the silver. Like, what would be incorrect would be that. Because it would just slide right through. Or hooking through just one. Like, that's going to get kind of complicated. <laughs> you see? So if it's like that, just remove it and re-thread it until you get it to lay the way we're trying to. And then I'm going to close that. And I'm going to thread through this purple through the two silver on this side and close it. And I'm going to thread through the purple, through the two on the other side. And close it. Just like that. And we have ourselves a full color rotation. Again, I do apologize for the camera being blurry, cutting in and out. Normally, I would have it set up over on my wooden work surface, my drafting table, um, where I normally do my tutorials, but the camera was casting such a shadow that um, I actually felt like that was more detrimental than what the camera being blurry, cutting in and out, was being. So, uh, thank you all for being patient and sticking through this video with me. And I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, 
please send me a message or just let me know. I love hearing from y'all. So happy crafting and I hope y'all have a fantastic day. I'll see you around. Thanks y'all for doing this tutorial with me. I hope you had good luck um, making your helm chain. And if you didn't, if you had any problems, uh, send me a message, let me know. Uh, maybe I can help you. Um, or if anything, there's a lot of other talented uh, chain mailers and artisans out there on YouTube who might do it in a different way that you understand better. So um, I don't ever want there to be the misconception that I'm here being like, no, this is the only way to do it, blah, blah, blah. No, it's, this is just how I like doing it. <laughs> so um, again, thanks for watching. Uh, if y'all enjoy my work and would like to help support it or participate in my monthly fairy house giveaway, please check out my Patreon. Um, there's links down below for just a dollar a month or more. You know, money's nuts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for just a dollar a month, um, you put your name in the hat to participate in my fairy house giveaway. I do my drawings for like December's fairy house. The winner will be drawn and announced on January 1st. So that's always fun. Um, and also the proceeds go towards keeping these daily tutorials and vlogs and different things coming along. Um, as well as whenever I teach at conventions, um, people who attend my panels don't have to pay for tools and materials. And whatever they make, they get to take home with them. So that's really nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, so thanks again, you guys. I love you all and hope you have a fantastic day and happy crafting. I'll see you around. Hehehe. <laughs>